This is Dr. Jeff Epstein. I appreciate the opportunity to present my work on eyebrow restoration, a study evaluating the use of single versus multi-hair grafts for the Global Hair Loss Summit. My very first eyebrow transplant done in 1997, and my more recent eyebrow transplants were, in this case, I'm using mostly two and three hair grafts. Optimal results in eyebrow restoration rely on essentially four key elements, aesthetic eyebrow design, appropriate graft harvesting and dissection, aesthetic site creation, and also finally technically sound graft placement. It's beyond the scope of this presentation to discuss eyebrow design, but there are differences to know between men, male and female eyebrows. And here's some typical examples before and after, another example before and after females, another female eyebrow, and then finally another female eyebrow, and then the male eyebrow, heavier look, um, you know, flatter, and another example before and after. The making of recipient sites, it's key to stay as flat to the skin as possible. You use primarily 0.5 millimeter blades, made, decisions are made sagittally, typically 300 to 350 grafts per eyebrow, and mostly we use two hair grafts. And here's a demonstration of my making my recipient sites, the inferior border, the recipient sites are directed lateral and superior, the superior border directed lateral and inferior, and then the medial most aspect, the recipient sites are made vertically, except for the very top row medially where they're made horizontally. Occasionally it's important to follow an aesthetic direction of growth to avoid damaging the existing hairs. And planters are used for graft placement into the 0.5 millimeter recipient sites. Graft harvesting and dissection. Most commonly we're using FUE. It's important to trim the cuff of skin, but do not skeletonize the grafts. You want to determine the ideal numbers of hairs per graft. Most commonly it's going to be two hairs. So this way, if you have three hair grafts, you need to divide them into a one and two hair graft. We'll typically discard the single hair graft that's been dissected out, relying on the two hair graft with all the supportive tissue to have the highest rate of regrowth. We like to harvest extra grafts to choose the best. Most commonly, it's in the lower occiput, uh, where we have the desired curl, and they're also the least likely to turn gray for as donors. So the question is, single and multi-hair grafts. Advantage of single hair grafts, it's easier to place them to smaller recipient sites. Also, it helps assure naturalness. However, two and three hair grafts maximize density and does not need to compromise naturalness. We will, in our standard technique, I will place single hair grafts in the medial head and distal most tail and then place primarily two hair grafts all along the border and primarily two hair grafts, but when indicated three hair grafts in the center. This was by request, all single hair grafts. It's a fine look, not very dense, but it's certainly aesthetic. These are some of my two and occasionally three hair graft cases. One example before and after, another example before and after with the use of multi hair grafts before and after and before and after. With Asian hair, we'll primarily utilize single hair grass as we will with Afro or black patients. So I asked, do single or multi-hair grafts produce superior results? So I created a study, planned on doing transplants on 15 patients, enrolling 15 patients, seeking bilateral eyebrow transplantation uh, with no um, prior transplants or other contraindications to doing the procedure. But prior microblading was fine, most patients I had their grafts harvested by FUE, but some had by FUT or hybrid. 0.5 millimeter recipient sites used, occasionally 0.6 millimeters, and study subjects received a small discount and were offered a no touch, no cost touch up if there were asymmetries. We wound up enrolling eight subjects, mean of 50 years old, all females, variety of ethnicities. And one eyebrow was transplanted with all single hair grafts, the opposite eyebrow transplanted according to my current approach using mostly two hair grafts. Follow up at eight to 10 months, and we had evaluation by patients and by blinded observers. The blinded observers were three of my assistants. At eight months, the study was prematurely terminated prior to full enrollment because the clear superiority of outcomes on the multi hair side in the first day patients by both self assessment and observer evaluation. The mean number of grafts placed into the single hair side was 307, which meant there were 307 recipient sites into each eyebrow. Meanwhile, for the multi-hair uh, uh, side, the mean number of grafts placed was 291 for approximately 580 hairs. And here's a couple of examples before and after 
uh, you can see the multi-haired on the on your left and the single haired on the right. Another example, multi-haired versus single hair. So patient self-assessment, mean scores, blue, single hair, orange, multi-hair, particularly with density, but also overall aesthetic result, higher scores achieved with the use of multi-haired graphs. Blinded observer assessment, single hair versus multi-hair. There was, a, it was a, also, once again, density was deemed better and also overall aesthetic result was deemed better with the multi-haired versus the single hair side. So in conclusion, multiple hair graphs yielded superior results in terms of density, naturalness, and overall aesthetic results. These superior results rely on the ability to place multi-hair graphs into the same size recipient sites as one hair graphs to permit the same number of graphs but twice the number of hairs in each eyebrow. And there was a higher overall aesthetic score differential by third-party observers, 8.5 versus 6.0, than by self-assessment, 8.0 versus 6.5. And that likely reflects either an enhanced ability by the evaluators, which were my assistants, to appreciate what I feel are excellent results, or bias conveyed by, my, by me upon my assistants as to what I consider successful results. So my final thoughts, ultimately, the surgeon must make a myriad of decisions as to how to achieve the best results in his or her hands, relying on the skills of his or her assistants. And this includes taking into account hair color, curl, ethnicity, and patient goals. Thank you.